So one of the major topics for this particular unit is the characteristics of life. What do all living things have in common? What do they all share? What are those things that if you exhibit uh, whatever list, X, Y, and Z, that means you're alive. We're going to go through a few of them, well more than a few, but there's a ton of characteristics that, that virtually, virtually all living things have in common. Um, we're not going to make you know all of them, but, but, but what's on our list you should probably um, take to heart. So here we go. We're going to continue through a list of characteristics. First of all, um, all living things are made up of one or more cells. These cells could be prokaryotic, as you can see here, or they could be eukaryotic. Now, there are unicellular organisms. There are unicellular prokaryotic organisms that are bacteria. If they're prokaryotic, that means they don't have a true nucleus. That they have genetic material, we'll learn later on, spoiler alert, uh, that all living things have genetic material. Um, but in a prokaryotic cell, they aren't enclosed by a nuclear envelope. They aren't um, encapsulated as they are down here in a eukaryotic cell. The genetic material is kind of in a, a region called the nucleoid, um, but like I said before, it isn't um, membrane bound. Typically in a eukaryotic cell, as we can kind of deal with these together, in a eukaryotic cell they do have a true nucleus. It, it is bound by a membrane um, going back up here with a prokaryotic cell, this genetic material um, in the nucleoid region is circular in shape. Okay, it has little plasmids that um, that can be used a lot in biotechnology for splicing and and gene insertion. It's not um, the same shape as as the the chromosomes in a eukaryotic cell. Prokaryotes don't have complex organelles. They don't have an endoplasmic reticulum or a Golgi apparatus like a eukaryotic cell does. So for that reason, they're, they're simple. That's in quotes because when you think about it, all cells are pretty complex. But in comparison with a eukaryotic cell, prokaryotic cells are, are rather simple. And once again, these are the bacterial organisms. All prokaryotes are bacterial. With eukaryotes, we have the true nucleus, the genetic material, the chromosomes are wrapped around histone proteins. Um, they, they're called chromatin, so the chromosomes uh, are more organized um, rather than just being in a, a circle. Well, they're more complex, let's put it that way. Um, much, much like the rest of the cell because it has these complex organelles like um, the ER, like the Golgi, etc. Larger, we're talking about eukaryotic cells being larger because they have all of these organelles. Um, they're going to be larger in size. And whereas we were talking about prokaryotes up here, down here for the eukaryotes we've got animals, plants, fungi, and protists. So one or more cells. Here we are. Here's our prokaryotic cell. Rather simple in comparison with the eukaryotes with all this ER, Golgi, um, mitochondria, vacuoles, uh, an endo, um, cytoskeleton system, and all that. All living things, uh, their cells contain genetic material. Here we are. Um, we talked about the shape difference. We have rod-shaped chromosomes wrapped around histone proteins in the eukaryotic cell. We have circular DNA or circular genetic material in the prokaryotic cell. So the shape's different, but they do um, both contain, all cells contain genetic material nonetheless. All living things reproduce. They might reproduce sexually. Okay, so having two partners who um, combine their genetic material, so the offspring is an offshoot of both, a combination of both parents. Asexual reproduction is one individual reproducing a clone of itself. Could be by budding, like this, uh, this organism here, or could just be by cell division, binary fission as these. But it's, it's important to remember that the offspring and sexual reproduction are a combination of the parents. It's asexual. We're just talking about cloning, essentially. All living things obtain and use energy. They have metabolic processes that they carry out that either break down complex organic molecules or in the case of plants and photosynthesis and some photosynthetic protists, um, they can produce 
organic molecules that can produce their own sugars. Um, ultimately, the, the, the source of all energy is the sun because um, in plants, uh, they fix the energy from the sun into, into sugars. We eat the sugars. Um, we ingest it. Uh, we carry out cellular respiration, convert that to ATP, and we use that energy for our life's processes. Plants are autotrophic. They can produce their own sugars. Um, pretty much all other organisms are, are heterotrophic. We have to search uh, for, for another source of energy. All living things respond. All living things adapt to their environment. Okay, we're talking about uh, becoming more more efficient in our environment, being able to operate more efficiently, to be more successful where we live. That might be um, possessing a, a camouflage color like this Arctic fox, or uh, a winter coat like this deer when it gets cold. So. All living things have to make some adjustment, uh, some response to their environment in order to be successful, in order uh, not to go extinct. All living things maintain homeostasis. Uh, when you have a, a homeostatic conditions, we're talking about um, constant bodily conditions internally with respect to those external. So just because it's 20 degrees outside doesn't mean that my body's any colder than if it's 90 degrees outside. Right? We have to do certain things to maintain homeostasis. Uh, whether that's uh, for these emperor penguins grouping together to utilize body heat to stay warm, these turtles basking in the sun because they're ex exothermic, they can't regulate their body temperature. Uh, we've got goosebumps. When you get goosebumps, you're trying to maintain homeostasis. Right? Your body's trying to maintain a constant um, temperature with respect to the outside. If you're having trouble maintaining homeostasis, if your body is fighting to maintain homeostasis, you have a fever or you're sick, it doesn't feel pleasant. Uh, but, but know that your body's working. That's why you have a fever, because your body is feverishly working and producing um, the, the cells to fight off whatever intruder is attacking your body. So homeostasis is not only temperature, uh, it's pH in the body uh, and other uh, chemical levels in the body that we need to keep constant in order to stay healthy. Organisms have an expected lifespan. All right, Whatever it is, whatever organism, it's fairly unique to us. For us, um, we have a lifespan in the 70s. Uh, for dogs, it's different. For this Aldabra tortoise, it's different. Even within dog breeds, the larger the breed, typically the shorter they live. Uh, tortoises can live up to 200 years. So um, this, this is true for all living things. All living things grow and develop. All right, This is pretty straightforward. Um, there, there's more um, drastic cases of this in, in the tadpole developing into a frog or a, a caterpillar a pupa developing into a, a, a butterfly. But we all do these things. We all go through different stages of development we, uh, through puberty. Uh, to becoming fertile, all these different stages in life. Living things do these, all right? They go through these different stages. And that's all she wrote. So those are the ones we're going to want you to know to, to, uh, to concentrate on. Like I said before, there's more, uh, but these are the big ones that we're going we're gonna to stick with, with for this unit.